This is the notes for section 11.5, Rational Root Theorem. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you read the section before continuing on with these notes. So first of all, we need to re just be reminded what, when we talk about a rational number. A rational number is any number that can be written A over B, where A and B are integers or whole numbers, positive or negative. Okay. So if you think back to last section, we found that the zeros are the roots of a polynomial were the x-intercepts if I look at it graphically. So um, any polynomial, if I know the zeros of it, I know where the x-intercepts are. Well, those x-intercepts sometimes will be rational numbers, and sometimes they're irrational numbers. Okay. In this section, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to identify, find both the possible and the actual rational roots of a polynomial using the rational root theorem. Okay, so there's a difference between the possible ones based on some information we know about that polynomial and the actual ones which are the, the actual intercepts that are rational values on the x-axis. So let's look at what the rational root theorem tells us. It says suppose that all the coefficients of a polynomial function described by this, and I know that looks uh, somewhat confusing, but I'll try and break that down here in just a little bit for you. Are integers where a sub n is not equal to 0 and a sub 0 is not equal to 0. So these values are not equal to 0. If p over q is a root of f of x in lowest terms, then p is a factor of a sub 0 and q is a factor of a sub n. So in other words, if I'm looking for the, the possible rational zeros um, of, of, of any polynomial, I know that they'll be of the form p over q, where p is a factor of this constant. Remember, a sub, a sub 0 is the constant that the, the, um, uh, the value with an, oh, an x term on it. And q will be factors of a sub n, or the leading coefficient. Okay, So really what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the factors of the leading coefficient and factors of the constant value of your polynomial. Okay, So if we're identifying the possible and actual roots of, of a polynomial, the possible roots will be all the factors of a sub 0, or p, over all of the factors of a sub n, or the leading coefficient, q. So we want to find the factors of a sub 0, find the factors of a sub n, and put, put all the combinations of p over q together. Okay. Now, when I look at the actual rational solution, so these are the possibilities. So basically what we're doing is we're limiting all possible rational numbers to the, the different p over q values. And then the actual rational zeros are the possible rational zeros that are actual zeros of the polynomial function. Okay. All right, you might want to uh, read examples 1 and 2 on page 761 and 762 before continuing on with uh, the next two examples here. But let's take a look at example one here. It says, apply the rational root theorem to identify the possible rational roots of f of x. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to list my factors of a sub 0, which are my possible p values. So I'm going to call those p. And the possible values that I could have for p are plus or minus for all of these now because these are the factors of 15, 1, 3, 5, and 15. Those are the factors of p. And then if I look at q, the factors of q, it's also plus or minus. And q, for q values, we're looking at the leading coefficient, which is 3. So that would be plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 3. So if I want to find the possible rational um, roots of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the possible p over q values. 
And to do that, I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write it as plus or minus. And then I'm going to list all of them. So I have 1 over 1, 3 over 1, 5 over 1, 15 over 1. So I've done all of them over 1, and then we'd want to do all of them over 3. So we'd have 1 over 3, 3 over 3, 5 over 3, and 15 over 3. Now what I'm going to do is this, is I'm going to simplify that by looking at um, only only writing things once. So 1 over 1 is 1, 3 over 1 is 3, 5 over 1 is 5, 15 over 1 is 15. So all of those would be possible zeros. And then 1 third, 3 thirds is the same as 1, so I don't need to write that one again. I have 5 thirds, and 15 over 3 is the same as 5, which I already have listed. Therefore, I have, here's the list of my possible zeros for that function. All right, so now we have our list of possible uh, rational zeros from example one. What I want to do in example two is find the actual ones. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm, I'm going to graph, graph the function and find where it intersects the x-axis, and then check to see which of those intersection points are on this list those would represent my actual uh, rational zeros. Okay, so I've, I've graphed the function now on my graphing calculator, so I need to find what these zero values are. There's a few different ways that we can do it. One of them is to go to Menu, and then go to Analyze Graph, and let's select zeros. If I do that, I've got to select between where and where I want to find it. So if I click here, and then I slide over past the first one, You'll notice that it brings up that zero of whoops one zero and and I know that's on my list so that means one of my zeros is at x equals one I'm going to repeat it to find that second intersection point now so between here and here you'll notice that I get 1.81 well 1.81 is not on that list, and what that tells me is that 1.81 is actually an irrational number. And although it's a zero of the function, it's not a rational zero of the function. So the only rational zero, although I had that long list of possible ones, the only actual rational zero is at 1. Therefore, um, I'm going to write over here x equals 1 would be my only solution. <laughs> So let's take a look at example 3 here then. It says use the rational root theorem to show that the square root of 3 is an irrational number. So we're going to do that kind of like uh, like the example in that, well, if this is true, I know that's that is a solution to x squared equals 3. Because if I take the square root of both sides, then x is equal to the square root of 3. So if I were to, to write that as a polynomial set e, setting it equal to 0, I could say that's x squared minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, if I'm, if I'm thinking about the possible rational zeros, I know that my, my p values are factors of 3, so that would be plus or minus 1 or 3. And I know that the possible q values are plus or minus 1. Therefore, p over q, the only possible values that we could have for p over q would be 1 or um, 3, and plus or minus for those. Well, since the square root of 3 is not equal to 1 or 3, and we also know that it's a solution to this, therefore the square root of 3 must be an irrational number.